Hey guys, welcome back to the English Gentleman Game with me, Roscoe. More retro goodness for you. Um, I do apologise if you don't like a lot of the retro gaming. There's just not a lot of modern games that interest me or light my fire at the moment. And this is what I've been doing in my spare time. This is Re Ninja Gaiden 2 on the Nintendo. Now, this was actually recorded using JNES on Windows, but I have got um, a retro pie which is the subject of today's video. Retro pie, for those who don't know, is basically a Linux based operating system that you copy over to a micro SD card and you stick it inside a Raspberry Pi and plug in a USB controller and away you go um, and that's it you've got access to a wide variety of um, systems and ROMs or whatever you want to call them well they are called ROMs let's just say what your personal preference is for them I'm just trying to find a list there's a list of the systems that it supports um, sorry, getting to the top. Atari 2600, Apple II, Commodore PET, Atari 800, Intellivision, Z Machine, never heard of that one, Commodore VIC 20, IBM PC or MS DOS, whatever you want to call it, from quite a long time, 1981, uh, Commodore C64, Commodore CBM2, Vectrex, ZX Spectrum, MSX, NES, Apple Macintosh from 84. Amstrad CPC, Commodore Plus 4, Commodore 128, Commodore Amiga, Atari ST, Master System, Sega System 16 arcade boards, Turbo Graphics 16 or PC Engine, whatever part of the world you're from, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, a CP system, which I've never heard of, but apparently some sort of arcade board, Atari Lynx, Game Boy, Sega Game Gear, Neo Geo, Super Nintendo, Sega CD, CP System 2 arcade board, Sega 32X, Sony PlayStation, CP System 3 arcade board, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, something called Scum VM, which I've never heard of, but I think it's for playing, playing LucasArts games like um, Secret Monkey Island. And the last one, which I've definitely never heard of, the C64 Direct to TV. Now, the bits that interested me is basically the 8-bit and the 16-bit stuff. Now, the Raspberry Pi I've got was given to me by a colleague at work, so it's only got 256 meg of RAM. Now, I have managed to get Crash Bandicoot Racing working, but it was very, very slow. So, um, on the... Ver if you've got the version like I have, the 256 meg of RAM, I personally won't bother trying to play 32-bit um, or 64-bit games. Even Star Fox, to be honest, plays a bit slow. I've fired it up. Uh, every other Super Nintendo game I've tried on it, which includes um, Super Punch-Out, Super Mario World, Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore, um, Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I'm not sure I've played on it. F0, they, normal kind of games that didn't have graphical chips in them, they all work fine. Um, but Star Fox, Star Wing, it was very very choppy and about half the speed, unfortunately. But I didn't get it to play that, or I only wanted it to play NES games more than anything, and Mega Drive games. Um, so I'm alright, personally. But if you are going to get one, the 27 quid at the moment on Amazon, that's for the Raspberry Pi 2B. Which has one gig of RAM, which is four times what I've got, and a slightly faster processor. Um, there are other alternatives that also work. One called a Banana Pie, another one called an Orange Pie, and they have, um, if you careful and you go on various websites like Bang Good, which I'd never heard of, but anyway, they will get you a, ras a Banana Pie too, which I think one of them's got two gig of RAM in it, and also got a GPU attached as well, so they're even better. Not as easy to get hold of in Britain. Um, Worth it if you can, um, and you don't mind taking a punt on 30 quid and waiting three weeks for it to arrive. But um, anyway, I digress slightly. So, Raspberry Pi is what I've been playing or doing at home. I've been doing a bit of tweaking to be honest because I'm relatively familiar, not an expert, but familiar with Linux. So, the setup scripts and stuff didn't take me too long. But once it's done, it's a piece of piss. You basically, you, you do need a window. Well, a Windows machine is the easiest way to um, get uh, Raspberry Pi onto your micro SD card. I'm not going into all that, there's plenty of tutorials on the internet about that. So I've got the micro SD card in, and I had a phone adapter lying around which fits it because it's got a micro USB for the power. Um, plugged it in my telly and it worked first time, and then you have to, a couple of little fiddly things, you've got to expand your file system for reasons I won't go into. And then you've got to copy over the ROMs. Now luckily for me, I can plug it in on the network at work, and it, because it uses Samba Share. Um, which is a open source thing it can read the Linux file system for me so I can sit on my work PC and copy the ROMs across the network now I believe there's a, there's a variety of different ways I also have um, a Ubuntu powered netbook at home 
which can read it as well so I can use that just to copy them over um, but I'm not going into all that but the games um, which is the real reason I brought the video well this isn't this is recorded using JNES and there's a bit of Castlevania um, after this which was recorded using Visual Boy now funny thing is it actually uses some of the emulators I use in RetroPie you just don't ever see any of this stuff it's got this thing called emulation station on top of something else called RetroArch which basically just wraps everything up nicely and makes it look pretty slick to be honest and once you've got the hang of copying the ROMs over it's just a case of downloading them now I would recommend a website called MU Paradise um, that's been in my experience the easiest place to get the ROMs from there are other places I've got them from but I'll not go into them MU Paradise anyway um, they'll give you a list of all these systems as far as I can I think this they've got ROMs for them all now the one thing I would say um, not just the fact that the older Raspberry Pi that I've got which is because I was given it um, won't support the 64-bit also don't go in there think the problem is, I mean within like the Super Nintendo you just copy ROMs over it recognizes the ROMs picks them up and away you go it's not quite so easy for stuff like Neo Geo um, oh, this is a bit of Castlevania record on Visual Boy which is from what I can remember the um, what's it called emulator that it uses yeah I've tried I've downloaded a variety of different arcade games including one the one I really wanted to play is one called Scud Race which is a stupid name but something I really liked playing back in the day and I've copied a few Neo Geo I wanted to get working but I wasn't sure why because when I went through the ROM list it was basically a metal slug in a few art fighting samurai showdown king of the fighters and I wasn't really interested in playing fighting games I wasn't particularly bothered about playing doing a lot of, a lot of fucking around to play metal slug when I've got it working on my lad's little DS um, DS Lite or whatever so there's some of them are a piece of piss like the Nintendo all, most, the 8 bit and 16 bit systems that I have experience of playing or whatever they're all dead easy um, it's the arcade boards and stuff there's very specific types of, of ROM sets that you need that are slightly harder to find but all I would say is YouTube if you've got any problems setting up and Reddit if you've got trouble finding um, ROMs and stuff like that but MU Paradise is where I go so after what I mean it took about five minutes to set the actual machine up and then however long it takes you to copy ROMs over and stuff like that away you go I've got no problem fault I can't fault the emulation I did find that this rain effect sound whatever you want to call it in Legend of Zelda 4 was a bit weird um, on the Super Nintendo one so I did install and change the default emulator and the sound was better I thought but what I did think was the graphics were quite choppy that may be due to the fact that my retro Pi is a bit older uh, Raspberry Pi is a bit older so it didn't quite have the oomph to do the graphics as well as the, the full sound if you will I don't know so your experience might be different but I did change it to SNES 9X but I put it back to Pocket SNES because I found the graphics were better and I could cope more with wishy-washy sound if you will can't believe I got fucking hit there and um, these are the only guys who ever damage you from what I can tell I, I was t led to believe that more than one type of enemy could take your health off uh, your whip power ups off you but so far isn't that fucker who spits fireballs at you that's uh, never done it to me I do fuck then I did fuck the recording up on this I did actually kill the boss first time round on this one but I don't actually get that far um, I may have to bring this level to you well a bit some of it anyway the, certainly the end of it because this boss was one of the easy, not the easiest one but one of the easier bosses that I fought I've managed to slog through this game on my phone which is why I'm quite a bit quicker than normal on this um, yeah I played through this game on my phone and did a lot of save stating and fanning around basically it was really hard playing any game with a virtual uh, some uh, wall chicken or wall beef whatever um, yeah playing with a virtual keypad or you know direction pad and buttons is quite hard because you can't feel anything so I'm, a lot of times I'm pressing stuff and nothing's happening or trying to roll my thumb like I would do if I had a joypad and it's just not working but yeah so retro pie if you've got one lying around and you don't know what to do with it or you've got 30 quid burning hole in your pocket I would definitely recommend getting one I mean most of us these days have got an HDMI cable lying around and a phone charger for an Android phone which or Windows phone which is what mine is so I didn't need to buy them um, 
I didn't need to buy the micro SD card either. I had, well, I did. I did buy a new one because I wanted a 16 gig one to fit everything on. Because uh, I mean, like I saw an interesting stat the other day. It was like someone posted on Nine Gag that the original Super Mario Brothers was 40 kilobytes all told, and they get the picture showing the screenshot was 240 kilobytes. So that the entire NES, NES library isn't very big. I mean, it doesn't get much bigger for the Super Nintendo either. Certainly for the 8-bit stuff and the 16-bit stuff. I think you could probably get away with the 4 gig card and have pretty much every game on there. But once you start looking at the um, Neo Geo ones start getting a bit bigger, certainly the PlayStation ones um, nearly 700 meg each because they're on a CD, so that'll soon fill up uh, a card. So my rec personal recommendation is a 16 gig one at least. I think it supports 128 gig. Um, but I'm not dead. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure 64 gig would be fine. In which case you could probably get most of the PlayStation games on there. But yeah, definitely worth having a punt. I've played, and the reason why I did it was because I want. There's a lot of 8-bit and 16-bit games that I've been listening to on podcasts and people recommending them, saying they had a good time playing them, and that I just wanted to play myself, remembering back to watching stuff like Games Master or even reading the gaming magazines back in the day, and I'm thinking, shit, I wish I'd, I wanted to play that. So I was in the process of fettling my Nintendo, Super Nintendo, etc., etc., at home, and then I heard about this. So my colleague at work said he'd give me his Raspberry Pi, so it didn't actually cost me a great deal to get it set up, but I think it's fantastic. Emulation Station does a good job of wrapping all the um, config files and everything that you need and the you know the ability to read your joypad and the ability to sort out all the emulators and then RetroPie fits it all together in a package that's easy to install and away you go. And it's like I say, if you're interested in doing it, have a look on YouTube, there's a guy called Tech Tipster, um, like an Australian Antipodean sounding dude that's done a lot on it. They've got some I mean they're quite long his videos, um, but they're very informative. And they're difficult to fuck up his instructions because he, he does take his time to uh, explain himself very well. But have a go. Um, modern game wise, my lad is getting an Xbox One for Christmas. So my intention is the lead that I need to record the retro pie and the Xbox One is the same one. I need a HDMI to um, component cable lead, whatever you want to call it. Now they're only four quid off eBay, so I'm going to order one. But I can use the same cable to record them both. So I'm going to be doing, and I am going to buy Dishonored 2. Um, I'm not going to buy a lot for his uh, Xbox One because there's not that many games that appeal to me. I'm not. I may have a go at Star Wars Battlefront when it's a bit cheaper, but as things stand, there's not the actual library. I thought for the Xbox One was quite poor on it. Certainly on Amazon, when I looked at all the Xbox One games you could get, there's a lot of Lego ones which I have to say didn't really interest me because I've played a Lego game on his 3DS and I don't imagine it being much different to be honest or certainly not any more enjoyable FIFA, I'm not going to ask about football games I, was, I did have a quick punt on Forza 5 when I was setting up his Xbox One the other day I have to say I was quite impressed so I think there will be some mileage in recording that one but we'll see, there's not I'm not, I, I will I have a Battlefront does appeal to me slightly, but I'll wait till it's a bit cheaper. Um, that's about it, really. Halo, maybe. I'd be more interested in play getting um, Halo 1, to be honest, because I did play it for a long time one Christmas. I never got around to finishing it, and I did enjoy that. So we'll see. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening to me drone on for, what is it, it's 14 minutes. Um, I'll be honest, more likely to be retro videos and current stuff in the near future, just because I need to get this lead sorted out to be able to record. Forza 5 is the only kind of current gen game that interests me in the slightest um, anyway have a good Christmas guys and get some gaming done hope you have a good new year, hope you get what you want off the big man and I'll catch up with you in 2016 thanks for watching, bye